What is going on everybody, Louis Vuitton Don, bringing you guys another video and with the release of update 2.9 tomorrow, I'm incredibly excited to show you guys this new hero, Churnwalker, um, one of my personal favorite heroes in the game already. Um, and he's the most disruptive hero I think in the game as well. Just the playmaking potential that top tier supports are going to be able to have with him is just, I think it's unparalleled across any any hero in the game. So in this video, I'm going to be showing off all of his A or all of his talents, his A, B, and his C, and his C being my personal favorite. So we'll save that one for last. But um, I'm going to be talking about his abilities, possibly tactics that you can use, and what I think synergizes well with him. So for this first clip, we're testing uh, just playing a blitz. Everyone's using max talents, so take in mind things are going to be a little chaotic. They're going to be a little bit crazy. Um, it won't be like this in regular Blitz games, but in these, everyone has max talent. So in this one, we're using his A talent, which has an absurd 219% heal uh, once an ability is chained that Churnwalker is given. So damage that is done to enemy heroes, uh, Churnwalker will heal for 219% of that instead of what I believe is 18%. Uh, just off his regular kit with no talents. However, his damage reduction is released, and you can see right there, um, I love that talent. Um, Arden's legendary talent, the range was increased from four to eight, so heroes would just be flying across the map and getting punted everywhere, as you can see right there. I don't support, so didn't, didn't get the fountain off in time, but um, his A talent's a lot of fun, it's gonna just, if you build really tanky, it should uh, allow you to not die nearly as easily because you're just going to be healing up with everything from his A ability. Um, so if I can just run over his abilities, I'm sure you guys have seen the, the hero reveal, but if I can just talk about it a little bit. Um, his his um, heroic perk is called Futility of Life. and Whenever Churnwalker takes damage from any source, he regenerates a percentage of that as health, and that's 18%. But with this talent, it's 219%. And whenever any chained victim takes damage, a percentage of that is shared across other chained victims. And honestly, when it comes to everything about Chainwalker's kit, I think this is going to be the thing about him that will stand out the most. Because you can imagine if a god support like Gabe Vizel or someone, or Flash or Ingenious from EA has an entire enemy team changed, chained, and they're all low trying to run away, and if someone has an ability that does an, a lot of burst damage, like Kestrel's ultimate, like, um, I don't know, two basic attacks from Baron, like uh, a shank from Saw, it could potentially kill all of them. So that damage share is incredible, but with this talent, it is reduced, so you won't be seeing much of that for this clip, but regardless, I'm, I'm incredibly excited for once that, um, is going to be in the game, uh, which will be tomorrow. So you can see right there, I'm just trying to chain victims whenever I can. Unfortunately, Arden, his legendary talent will break the chain, <laughs> just because he punts me so far away. But other than that, my chain will always stay on enemy heroes, um, and I overdrive my B, uh, as I think you should do every game with Churnwalker. I would max B first, because the reset on the A, um, allows you to throw out as many chains as you want if you were to land it on an enemy hero. So, maxing the B, however, increases the range that they are pulled back and the damage that's done um, with that pull. So you can see, Catherine actually died there from Saw, just because Saw was attacking Rhyme and the damage was then shared onto Catherine. Even that minimal amount of damage that's reduced using this talent, it's still impactful. So I'm just going to classic support build. I think it's important to build uh, some sort of cooldown on Churnwalker just so that you can continue to spam out those, those B abilities um, and, and yank all the enemy heroes back. Spam out the torments is what it's called. Um, and his C ability, um, I think it looks just incredible as well. There's a big, a big cloud, churn power I think it's called. And then Churnwalker travels to that location and then stuns everyone. So you can see right there, I just land a triple stun on their whole team, breaking all the chains. Um, and uh, do I max it? Yeah, I max my C, which increases the stun duration. So I think Churnwalker synergizes 
quite well with a lot of heroes just because of how versatile this kit is. Because it can pull enemy heroes away but also towards your carries, he works well with assassins and heroes that want to dive, but he also works well with squishies and heroes that you know just want to poke as he can pull enemies away if he positions correctly into their, uh, their skill shots. So we unfortunately lose that first game, but still happy that we get to show off a little bit of him. In this game, we're using his B ability. And his, uh, I'm sorry, we're using his, uh, his B talent, and, or his epic. Uh, epic or rare? I think it's epic, yeah. We're showing off his epic talent, which it's, honestly, it's, it's probably one of the most useful Churnwalker talents, in my opinion. His, his uh, legendary talent is just ridiculous, but we'll get to that. His, uh, his epic talent is called Cloud of Torment, and doing this releases a powerful churn cloud that damages enemies over time, making Churnwalker a dangerous threat at close range. So normally Churnwalker isn't the best built as uh, a carry. Someone, I don't know, Shinkaigen or Von C will find some way to play him as a carry, but uh, in my experience, I haven't found that he does enough damage to justify building him weapon or CP. But Cloud of Torment does uh, crystal damage and um, it, it, uh, it makes him extremely tanky. So what I'm just trying to do is uh, build a little bit of crystal power and then just tank up and vir like virtually never die. You can also see this game we're playing with a CP Vox. And I think the release of Churnwalker will bring CP Vox back into the meta in a big way, just because of how easy it is for CP Vox to land um, all of his resonance bounces on teams because Churnwalker can just drag them all together. So you can see right here, I grab a chain, uh, throw off an ult, and Vox just absolutely eviscerates the enemy team. Pop the ult, sorry, I didn't pop it earlier, but we get the ult off there and end up securing the kill. But CP Vox with that, extra bounce talent, um, just, I mean, he just decimates teams. And with Churnwalker, the synergy is just, I mean, it's incredible. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of that this game. We've got Dr. Evil, uh, the devs. So you always gotta try hard, try hard against the devs on the enemy team. He unfortunately gets sniped by Kestrel. Uh, we try to land a hook on Rhyme there. I think we maybe missed, but you can see that Churn Cloud is around me um, at all times, and it's also dealing damage. So I have chains on both of these heroes right now, so Kestrel is actually damaging both of them while only attacking one of them at a time because she's weapon power. She manages to pick up the double kill, and we're just, I mean, we're rolling. You can, you can already see how impactful this hero is, and I mean, I've been playing him for a couple of weeks now, but I mean, I can only imagine how, how impressive he's going to look when a team like Cloud9 or a team like TSM picks him up. And, and you know, truly masters him, uses him his full uh, capabilities. So right there, I mean, we're just, we're hooking enemies, we're using our hook and chain. Uh, in doing that, they take a little bit of, um, uh, a little bit of damage over time, and it also briefly slows them when I first land the chain. But, I mean, <laughs> in terms of CC, he has a hard stun from his ultimate, and he also just has the constant yank and just misposition from my B ability. So, I mean, he, he sort of reminds me of a Finn, or um, in that, you know, I'm pulling enemies, but I'm doing it every seven or eight seconds or so, instead of, you know, every 60 or 40 when I have uh, the hook. So, we do manage to win that game, largely due to the incredible synergy that Churnwalker has with uh, Crystal Power Vox. This game, we're, we're just going against bots. The other ones were against real players, but I just wanted to show off the grappling hook talent here. And I mean, when players get this, they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna just freak out because I know I did the first time I saw it. He has a range of 40 with his A ability, with this, with this talent. I believe that's the longest range in the game of any ability that's not global. So you can see, when I'm already at my second turret, I can, I can grab their first turret, almost, and I can grab enemies in the mid lane with my A ability. Now, in addition to having the increased range, it also grapples me and pulls me towards them, as you can see, as I just did there. So now I've got them all chained. 
uh, they're bots, so you know, don't expect much out of this game. But uh, you can see I'm trying to play in crystal power here, and I just I built raw crystal power. I max my A ability to see maybe if it'll do more damage um, uh, over time. You know, building the crystal power. But as you can see, it's not incredibly effective. And I mean, we're just going against we're going against bots here. So I think real players it won't even be close. But Someone may find a way to do it. I know Truth played Weapon Churnwalker against me, and he actually won. But that's because Truth is Truth, and I don't know, that kid's on something. Um, we narrowly miss Ringo there. Uh, throw out another one, see if we can land a hook. Yeah, and then we're just yanked towards him. <laughs> that's got to be one of my favorite talents in the game. You just fly across the map. Um, but... For a, for a moment, I also want to talk about the new, uh, the new crystal items that have been added to the crystal tree within this game. Um, the, there, there, there's been a lot of changes to the crystal tree. Uh, one major emphasis has been lowering the cooldown of, I think, every single cooldown item in the game pretty significantly. Like, I believe Hourglass was lowered from 5, or from 15, um, 15 uh, cooldown reduction and it was reduced to five and I mean every every item that uh, had any sort of CD is now being reduced um, fa uh, Clockwork also had some major changes wherein now it no longer gives as much uh, just flat uh, cooldown reduction but it has a new passive where using an ability will lower the cooldowns of all your other abilities. So it's, it's now a pretty solid choice for both early and late game uh, for landing consistent poke and good damage. And it really incentivizes um, crystal heroes or heroes building cooldown to play it aggressively so that uh, the cooldown of all their other abilities will be reduced. So if I can just give a quick example, say I'm playing Celeste, and if I do damage with my A ability and my B ability is on 10 second cooldown or so, Landing my A ability damage will reduce the cooldown on my core collapse by 7.5%. Um, this can only occur every two seconds though, so you can't just spam everything out like you used to. But cooldowns on, uh, on long cooldown abilities like ultimates or like, uh, you know, Lyra's Beak um, or abilities with long cooldowns will be able to be used much more often. Frostburn was also slowed. It now provides more consistent slows, uh, but it does less damage. But, I mean, I think this is a buff, and I think it's a lot of fun to play. It's really good for kiting, and, I mean, when you try out Frostburn, I mean, the extra slows, is it's very noticeable. Broken Myth also was changed uh, in a major way. Now the passive of stacking is gone, and now it's purely focused on Shield Pierce, which... Um, is it, which is now a passive ability, so Shield Pierce no longer stacks in the sense that you could pick up a Piercing Spear and a Broken Myth and then just stack everything. So Broken Myth is now more a situational item when the enemy team has lots of Aegises, lots of Shields, rather than a must-buy for every CP carry. The item that I have um, right now is called Spellfire, and I mean, it's an unreal item. I'm still a little bit confused as to how to play it in the best way possible, but um, it's it builds out of Heavy Prism and Eclipse Prism, and the passive is that abilities dealing crystal damage to enemies deal 100% of your crystal power as bonus crystal damage over four seconds. So it's really good for heroes that spread out their damage um, and you know sort of a poke and disengage style of play. Um, so heroes such as you know I mean. A lot of crystal heroes, to be honest, Scarf, Celeste, anyone that pokes will now be able to be a lot more effective with that ability. Dragon's Eye is sort of the new broken myth. It has a passive similar to that, um, but it has a slight difference of what in what it takes to keep your stacks up. Um, it's basically broken myth. Uh, it's a new broken myth, but it's also breaking point for crystal heroes. So you now gain 20 crystal power for each second you are damaging any enemy heroes. After two and a half seconds, you lose three stacks per second. So basically you have to know it's good for kiting, good for really long engagements, and it's really good for captains as well. Uh, we go ahead and end that game there um, just because <laughs> I'm not going to play against bots for that long. It's just not going to work out. But 
I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this uh, Turnwalker video showing off the new talents and uh, I'm really excited for that update tomorrow. I should have another video dropping soon showing the Petit skins, showing the Lyra skins, and showing the uh, new Baron skin, which is one of my favorite skins in the game. So stay tuned for that and I will see you guys in the next one. Louis Vuitton down now.